Today we're showing arena players that if you tap out, you lose. All right, so here's our deck for today, our budget Storm Herald, if you tap out, you lose deck. So the goal of this deck is simple. We are trying to set up a game state where if our opponent ever taps out, we play Storm Herald, make it into like a 50 power hasty trampling attacker, one shot kill our opponent, and we can do this as early as turn three with our best draw. So how do we actually set this up? Well, first, Storm Herald's ability is when it enters the battlefield, it reanimates any number of ores in our graveyard for one turn. So step one is get a bunch of really powerful ores in the graveyard for this we have prodigious growth epic proportions just huge boost to stats and also trample ancestral mass gives a creature plus two plus two for each other enchantment in play so if we can reanimate a bunch of other enchantments this is like plus six plus six plus eight plus eight audacity our cheapest enchantment also gives plus two plus zero and trample so ideally we get three four or five all of these in the graveyard with the help of things like circle land druid satyr wayfinder grapple with the past season pyromancer just lets us get these cards from our hands into the graveyard and then we play our storm herald it is absolutely massive our opponent dies on the spot if we don't draw our storm herald we can eldritch evolution acting like our satyr wayfinder to find it we can grapple with the past another mill spell that lets us return a creature land from our graveyard to our hand bail again recovery just a one of but kind of a eternal witness mdfc so those can help us find our storm herald mana base pretty budget friendly remember uh, game trail uncommon now on magic arena so it's not actually eating up a rare wild card slot and that is our storm herald if you tap out you lose budget deck that's our deck for today let's jump into some games and uh show some magic arena players why they should never tap out thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy it and i'll be back in a bit for the wrap up need some magic cards well you can snag them from our sponsor card kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish we are <laughs> trying to make it so if our opponent taps out they die and this hand, eh, it's fine. I mean, it's good at filling the graveyard. The circle of uh, the lands drew is gonna be good at, honestly, <laughs> Watsy, I don't know why they rebalance this card. This is like one of those rebalances that I don't understand. For some reason, they took a card that exists and they added a single power to it for some reason, which seems like the kind of rebound, like why? What's the point? <laughs> why? Okay, sure, like it's a two one now? Like, is that actually worth the, the complexity cost? Let's say your Wayfinder. So all this to say, our hand does not have any payoffs, but we can mill a ton of cards and we have grapple with the past. So eventually we should mill our auras and we should mill our storm heralds. And then if our opponent taps out, they lose. We already have the storm herald. Well, we have two Storm Heralds. Uh, well, let's keep on milling. I mean, we might be able to set up the win next turn, depending on how we mill here. Ooh, oh, double prediction. Okay. Uh, our opponent is definitely dead the next time they tap out. <laughs> no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Yeah, that's a very full graveyard. All right, all we need... Oh yeah, that's, that is lethal plus, plus, plus. Tap out opponent for anything. You tap out for your best card and we are okay. Not the one ring, anything but the one ring. They shouldn't be playing the one ring though, right? The one ring would make us wait a turn. Don't worry about it, it'll be fine. There's no way this is gonna go horribly wrong if you just tap out and cast your Chandra or something. Let's block. Maybe we can bait our opponent into casting a removal spell here to keep their bone crusher alive. Uh, all right, opponent, let's it go. We will get back a mountain. I guess we could also just grapple and keep milling. Steam can. All right, one more, one more. Robert the Rich, okay. And that looks like the GG to me. So, grapple with it. We might as well go full on spectacular mode here. Mill, mill, mill. And eh, we didn't mill any auras, that's fine. Get back a Storm Herald. Play the land, Storm Herald. And <laughs> how much damage do we get? One, two, three, four, five auras coming back into play. They are good ones though. We have many prodigious gross there. How big is the Storm Herald? Opponent shouldn't have tapped out. <laughs> 40, 40, 39, hasty, trampler. Should have left up that play with fire opponent. Should have left up that play with fire. <laughs> Max punishment for tapping out. I mean, that's what this deck does. Like, if our opponent just continually leaves up removal, they can get us. If they decide to tap out, though, good god, does it go bad for them. <laughs> Telling our arena opponents that if they tap out, they die. <laughs> All on just a, uh, how many rares do we have, 14? I think it's 14 rare budget, it might be 15. Uh, depending on how many added to the mana base. No more than 15 rare budget, let's go with that. This end looks pretty good. We have two Seder Wayfinders for filling the graveyard and finding a red source for the season Pyromancer. Ooh, control. Can we beat a control deck? Well, there's a prodigious, ooh, 
Ooh, prodigious growth and epic proportions. So that's not quite lethal yet, but it might mean that the next Seder Wayfinder will mill a lethal combo. Right now we're giving what, plus 12, plus 12? So a Storm Herald's 15 power. I mean, our opponent's a control deck, so getting them when they tap out is going to be very important because if they refuse to tap out, the chances of them having removal encounters is very high. So we do got to try to find the window. I think our best plan is going to be to pressure as much as we can with our random dorks to force our opponent to need to tap out to Wrath. And then if our opponent has to tap out to Wrath, we just get him on the backswing with, uh, with our Storm Herald. Well, hit you to 19, play a land. Seder Wayfinder. Yes, we'll take the game trail. At first, I tried to play this deck without uh, Season Pyromancer, and you can play it without Season Pyromancer. The problem is you really want to weigh if you draw like Epic Proportions and Prodigious Gross to get them into the graveyard. Our deck's very good at milling from our library to the graveyard, but having a card that can put things from our hand to the graveyard is actually a big opponent. Cycles Irrigated Farmland, sure. I guess we don't really care if they tap out this turn, because I... Actually, do we have lethal this turn? Eh, they haven't tapped out anyway. <sighs> We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. We're gonna be responsible. Oh, I mean, we can... Hmm. Play the red source. Run out the circle of lands, druid. I mean, we do... We do have lethal if our opponent ever taps out. Cycles a sensor, sure. Rathos opponent shows that Supreme Verdict opponent waits. If we resolve this season Pyromancer, it might be enough to make our opponent Wrath. So opponent goes to 13, we play the land, we play season Pyromancer. I mean, our opponent doesn't technically have to Wrath this turn. Uh, discard the Ancestor Mask and the land. Ooh, all right, and a Seder Wayfinder. Unfortunately, we drew a prodigious gross. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Lethal's, lethal's lethal, like, <laughs> Our graveyard is lethal if we find the window. Well, this, we'll see. This could be enough to make our opponent wrath. They might feel like, all right, that's a lot of power. Two turn clock. Let's just sweep, reset. Little do they know, should they choose to wrath our board, the punishment is literally death. <laughs> that's what you get if you tap out against us. All right, Wandering Emperor, sure. I mean, sniping our, wow, just take out. Our opponent's definitely wrathing then. If you're not making a token there, you gotta be wrathing, right? I think this means we win, opponent tap land. And, <laughs> yes! I have never been happier to be wrathed. Uh, yes, we'll grab a land from our circle of land druid. And uh, opponent. <laughs> yes, make your chump blocker, that's fine. We will play a storm herald. And uh, how big's it gonna get? One, two, three, four, five. Put them all on Storm Herald, I guess for the rubbins. Might as well throw on that Ancestral Mask. How about a 42? Opponent scoops it up. <laughs> Got him. Shouldn't have tapped out. This hand looks pretty good. We got the Storm Herald, which is our big payoff. We got three ways of filling the graveyard. See what our opponent's up to. Oh God, Radiant Fountain. Ugh. Okay, this might be bad. A good draw from Paradox Engine combo is likely to race us here, especially with our opponent being on the play. All right, uh, let's mill really well here. All the big stuff. Oh, just an audacity. All right, that's actually pretty bad milling. A bonus, Power Stone Shard. We have one or two turns to win this game, and I don't know if we can do it in time. We really need this milling to, uh, to be a hit. We need it to be a hit. Let's discard the Ancestral Mask. Discard a land. Ugh, all right. Do we get, if we get two more turns, maybe. If we get two more turns, oh, that's a Paradox Engine, okay. We can't win this turn, because we haven't milled well enough, so let's fill the graveyard. Can we mill some big auras? Okay, there's, there's a big aura. Yeah, run out, I mean, I guess the question is, do they have the one ring? If they have the one ring, they go functionally infinite. If they don't, we beat them next turn like we have assembled lethal ah oh, this might be one of those games where because our opponent won the die roll if they have the one ring we're scooping they get protection for the turn and yeah functionally infinite with uh the mana rocks and the paradox engine storm rail is actually ah oh, the card's actually really sweet so the idea for this deck i played against someone on arena who was playing this jun storm herald deck that i didn't really like the build but storm herald looks sweet and i realized it's actually like a pretty perfect deck to make a budget deck because all you need is a bunch of random big enchantments in storm herald and you just get them <laughs> if they tap out you get them about it what are you up to 
Savvy Dryum. Ooh, there's a Storm Herald. We really need a red source. We have three big enchantments in hand, but we got the Pyro. So if we can find... Search for Ezkanta. If we can find a red source, we're kind of in business. Let's uh, grapple. All right, there's a red source at least. Yeah, whatever. Not going to do anything with that one mana. So might as well not show our opponent that we have a forest. Opponent. Search for Ezkanta. Mills of Garden. Opponent's probably reanimating, I assume. Seems like reanimator stuff. Opponent. Untap land down to 16. I mean, ooh, Riding Regisar. Ancestral Mask. Boy, we could use another Season Pyromancer, actually. <laughs> so we get to discard two Prodigious Grows. Draw. Game Trail Seder Wayfinder. I mean, I guess next turn we can. Seder Wayfinder into Storm Herald, baby. We'll see. See what our opponent does. Mills of Kenrith. They do have six toughness on defense. Is that enough that they can survive? Yeah, I guess we'll see what the Seder Wayfinder hits. Opponent, Rotting Registar. All right, well, so much for the toughness on defense idea. Uh, we will chump. Uh, opponent. All right. What do you got, opponent? What do you got? The fairy. Uh, that is not very relevant. Wait, you bounce the season pyro? Huh? Okay. Well, we do another one anyway. Uh, let's play Seder Wayfinder. See if we win. If not, then we season pyro. There's some audacity. I'm pretty sure this is lethal, right? Let's Storm Herald. Opponent's at 14, so yeah, this is obviously lethal. Double prodigious growth does it all by itself. About it. <laughs> Shouldn't have tapped out for that fairy. Shouldn't have tapped out for that little mini Storm Herald, but still very lethal. That's still 20. Budget magic time. We are showing our opponents uh, what happens if they tap out against our Storm Herald deck. We're gonna mulligan that one lander. See, I'm learning. I'm learning one land no keep. Uh, we're gonna put Storm Herald at the bottom. We shouldn't need two Storm Heralds, I don't think. What are you up to, Loris? Ornithopter. Oh god. Okay. Play a land and pass the turn. Ornithopter, Loris Island. Is this like ninjas, but without the good ninjas? If you're playing Loris, you don't get to play like Ingenious Infiltrator. <laughs> Silver for Master. Sure. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm we will take our beats. And Ornithopter makes its return. Well, let's do a little grappling. Hopefully mill some big enchantments. Well, okay. We milled a... We milled an Audacity. That's an enchantment. The Season Pyro is going to be good. We get rid of Epic Proportions and Ancestral Mask. Can we stay alive? Our opponent can just keep ninjutsuing off this Ornithopter forever, essentially. Pretty much forever. We don't have lethal yet. Plus, we kind of want our opponent to tap down. Plus five, plus five, plus four, plus four, plus two, plus zero. So, plus 11? Yeah, not lethal yet. Let's block the silver for master. About it. All right, more silver for masters. Well, I think our main plan is just, like, try to stay alive. Ornithopter's back. Try to stay alive and then, and then eventually get him with the Storm Herald. I guess that's always our, come to think of it, I think that's always our plan. Yeah, the math is not quite there, right? Four, two, so plus 11 and three. Yeah, we need, we need like one more big enchantment, I think. Well, that was some bad, bad milling. All right. Well, we mill some season pyros, which I guess like the season pyros we can eventually exile to make chump blockers. We are in full on chump block mode. Can we chump block long enough? Bound it goes attacking. Block, block. Yeah, we need one more big ore in the graveyard, and then we should be able to one shot. Wow, third silver for master. That's a lot of lords. All right. Well, we will take four down to 11. Ornithopter's back, and Fairy Seer. Well, I mean, I think we can win in two turns. If we. Oh, does Audacity. Does that change it? So that's plus four. Oh my God, so close. We need one more. So that's plus five, plus six. So it's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Just short, especially with Ornithopter chumping. So we still need one more aura. We're so close to actually one shot egg, but we're like one card off. So I think we just have to play a land, pass the turn. I mean, we can survive this turn, right? We can exile the pyro to make a couple blockers. Opponent with a big attack. They might be out of ninjutsu dorks at this point. Block, block, block. All right. 
so everything dies. We drop to 10. Opponent grabs Luris. Oh, we draw another land. Another land is kind of our worst draw. Two or four points of damage short. In theory, the Pyro keeps us alive one more turn. I guess the question is, do we, is there any argument for main phasing the Pyro and just playing the audacity on it to try to draw a card? I think it's worth it. Like this does open us up to more removal potentially, but I mean, in theory we block block, even if they kill one of our tokens, four, eight, nine, we go to one. Maybe this audacity, because audacity comes back from the graveyard anyway. So the draw is all upside here. Attacks, all right, block and block. Show us a, I don't even know, mill effect, some sort of mill effect off this audacity. All right, that's a Seder Wayfinder. We would like our opponent to tap down here. There's a Luris, sure. There's a prodigious growth. I wish that was one card deeper in our deck. Seder Wayfinder. All right, we hit a prodigious growth. Well, I don't think we have a choice but to go for it here because we are dead if we don't. So we would prefer our opponent to be tapped out, but we're gonna Storm Herald, get back everything. <laughs> We might have found a way to block just long enough. Our opponent had Silver for Master Tron, too. Like, that was a pretty good ninjutsu start. I think that's enough. Opponent can block with the Lurus in game three, but actually, in this case, they didn't even tap down. I guess they should have killed us faster. I guess that's the actual lesson here. <laughs> should have killed us faster. Showing our opponent what happens if they uh, decide to tap down against our... 15 rare budget Storm Herald deck. This hand I kind of like actually. Two pretty just gross in hand look awkward, but uh, we got the season pyro, so it's actually fine. The Seder Wayfinders, in theory, should find us red mana. And then uh, the red mana lets us pyro, discard the prodigious growth. And prodigious growth is the aura we want in our graveyard the most. Like that in the graveyard, two of those, that's plus 15 already. So you don't need, you need like one additional aura to make Storm Herald lethal at that point. All right, opponent, what do you, oh, wizards. Oh God. All right, well, <laughs> no matter what we play, we never be wizards, so we're probably dead. I feel like wizards is probably just the best deck in historic. It's the best deck against the decks we play at least because we literally like our win rate against wizards, no matter what we're playing is so pitiful. I'm sure that won't kill us. Well, we are gonna play a land and play a Seder Wayfinder. Let's find that red source. Eh, okay, there's the red source, that's good. I mean, this Belmore is especially problematic because otherwise we could chump block the prowess stuff a bit, but thanks to Belmore, it's all gonna have trample. Gonna make the chump blocking plan a little bit more difficult on it. Soul Scar Mage number two. Okay. Ring temps you shock, sure. Going after the Seder Wayfinder, I, I don't know why they killed that, but yes, that's fine. I mean, uh, is there a way we win in two turns? Not really. We're an aura short. What if we draw Audacity? Would that do it? Not really. I mean, we need Storm Herald anyway. Well, all right, make some dorks. If our opponent has zero spells in hand, we're good. Actually, I think we have enough ores that we can win. I don't know if we survive though. Wizards with Balmor is so much, oh, reckless charge. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Sure. Wizards Lightning. Oh yeah, we're we're dead. So I think if we had survived an exactly top deck Storm Herald, we had a chance, but too good. Wizards, too strong. The traditional Wizards beat down, a feature of the historic format. <laughs> Showing our opponent uh, what happens when they make the very wrong choice of tapping out against us. Sand looks pretty good. We got one mill effect, actually two counting grapple. We'll see. I mean, this deck, there is some weird variance in just what we mill. If all of our big auras are at the bottom, like life is sad. If they're all at the top, then the Storm Herald could be lethal, like in theory on turn three. Like it's not super likely, but it, occasionally we just mill the right things and turn three, you get them. Elvish Mystic, sure. Well, play a forest. Circle of the Land Druid and do some milling. Ouch, all right. Well, we hit a single audacity, which is not great. Opponent, ooh. Ooh, Circle of Dreams Druid. That's also not great. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess we audacity and get in there. Get in there for four. Would you like to, would you like to block opponent? You can trade. <laughs> circle for circle, let's do it. Opponent uh, declines. Well, this is gonna be bad. Elves with a thing that makes mana equal to the number of creatures you control is so explosive. War Master and a Mystic to trigger War Master. And now their Circle of Dreams Druid taps for five. 
Well, that likely means Coco. We need a literal miracle. All right, we mill an ancestral mask, which I guess is something. Better than like literally nothing. Not great, but Zader Wayfinder. All right, play this, it'll land. If we mill well, we might be able to set up the turn, the kill next turn. Will there be a next turn with a circle of dreams drew it out? The turn one dork into turn two, something that makes mana equal to your elves. That is the the dream start for the elf deck. Well, Seder Wave. Oh, no. Wayfinder. I knew it was a matter of time until we got betrayed by our Seder Wayfinder. It always happens. <laughs> the love-hate relationship. I love Seder Wayfinder. It's one of my favorite creatures, but you don't always find a land in your top four. This time, we really needed a Oh, there's the Coco. We really need the land because we need to play this Circle of Lands Druid to mill more cards to maybe set up... Oh, God, Lord. And another war master oh wait are we just dead i think we're just dead what mono green card could they possibly have at instant speed in an elf deck oh okay <laughs> they're gonna besage you in audacity i don't think that does anything but sure i guess you might if you're about to kill us then i guess you're just using it because you can you might as well <laughs> even though i think it's actually strictly worse for them because it gives us untapped mana and draws us a card we could have like a bolt or something uh the problem is our opponent can just activate these war masters a couple of times give everything plus four plus four and kill us uh yeah that was a really good this is the turn four wow and the finale that was a really good elf draw turn four kill that was actually kind of impressive we're the one that's supposed to be supposed to be doing that not you opponent actually this hand's pretty good we got this dormail we got the pyro Seder wayfinder as long as it doesn't betray us and finds us land then then this hand's actually very nice this could be a pretty fast kill actually come to think of it the Storm Herald, once we pyro and get the epic proportions in the graveyard, okay. Or we can just draw land and then we don't have to depend on Seder Wayfinder. Moody, moody Seder Wayfinder. <laughs> oh, hit another Triome. Well, all right, Seder Wayfinder, can you do your one job this time? <laughs> what is up with you? Seder Wayfinder twice in a row. <laughs> twice in a row betrayed. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we drew that. Oh no, Magma Opus. Oh god. So that Magma Opus could be coming back very shortly. Well, let's season Pyro. Discard the two enchantments. Draw a couple cards. Well, get him for one. Thun it down to 19. Do we win? Mm, we have epic proportions. Yeah. Opponent's gonna gain some life. We don't have enough enchantments to win yet. So we probably need two more turns, honestly. We probably need a turn to do some grappling. All right, opponent's just going to do a bunch of... Wow, that graveyard is getting frightening. Emergent ultimatum, a tally. So we're going to be able to mill like seven cards? We just got to hope our opponent doesn't kill us this turn. If they can somehow emergent ultimatum, we die. Well, circle lands, druid. Can we mill a big aura or two? Well, there's an ancestral mask. I think maybe we're good. We still have this grapple too, and we can grapple into another mill effect. I think we're hoping for our opponent to reanimate a tally. <laughs> I think if they reanimate a tally, they're pretty much tapped out and we win. They need to reanimate a tally and not hit emergent ultimatum. If they emerge ultimatum, we should just lose. Like I expect we just lose on the spot. But if they a tally, I'm pretty sure we can storm herald through a tally. All right, here they go. Unbury writes a tally. Come on, no emergent ultimatums. No emergent ultimatums. Oh, faithless suiting. Okay, that's that's perfectly fine. Storm Herald and Faithless Suiting. Their Storm Herald doesn't do anything. Faithless Suiting doesn't do anything immediately. Our opponent is gonna have mana up. Well, they could have mana. We'll see. Maybe they play something else. Alright, so we definitely die next turn, because I found the Sphinx that can flashback emergent ultimatum. Tap land. Well, alright. Opponent needs one of these two cards to be fatal push, I think. I mean, I guess we still don't technically have lethal yet. Oh, okay, there's a prodigious growth. That should mean we have lethal. Now we take Seder Wayfinder to mill some more cards. This time, we don't even need it to give us a, a land. If it fails, that's perfectly fine. Should we just avoid it? It has betrayed us twice in a row. We could just play the audacity. Yeah, let's go for it. Seder Wayfinder. <laughs> Three times in a row. I mean, that's fine. It milled epic proportion. So I guess it kind of did its job that time. All right, Storm Herald. Opponent, do you have Fatal Push? Doesn't look like it. Should we split it up? 
Yeah, we're just gonna go everything on the Storm Herald, whatever. If they somehow are slow rolling the Fatal Push, then I guess they, they got us. Uh, how about a 34 power hasty trampling attacker? A tally, we don't care. Not big enough, our three drop. Bigger than the biggest bad is nine is Aura. <laughs> In the format. Oh, I love this deck. I love this deck. Oh, sweet. We've had some good historic budget decks lately, I will say. Budget magic time. We are showing our opponent what happens if they tap out against Storm Herald. TLDR, they die. <laughs> that is the that is the answer. That's our hope anyway. We're trying to set the game into a place where if our opponent taps out, we kill him. We'd like to get the prodigious growth in the graveyard. We have Seder Wayfinder. We'll see. I think Seder Wayfinder has failed to find a land three times in a row. Not a not a great rate. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay. Well, uh, Seder Wayfinder, mill some cards four, four times in a row. <laughs> I mean, I guess we have enough lands here, so it's okay, but it is awkward. The Seder Wayfinder is essentially just been mill four. <laughs> oh God, Harmonic Prodigy. That's a frightening card. Season Pyromancer is actually an absurd draw here. If we, wow. I think if we spin into a Storm Herald, we can just win next turn. If our opponent taps down, discard the two big enchantments. Audacity and land. Okay. I mean, we can also... Yeah, that's, like, super lethal. We can also just Eldritch Evolution if one of our creatures is alive. Pound it gonna play with fire. Sure. All right, so we need Seder Wayfinder to live. <laughs> Who kills a Seder Wayfinder, though? It's so non-threatening. <laughs> it's so non-threatening. Who's gonna spend a real removal spell on it? Pound it. Just tap out. Tap out. How about tapping out? Yeah, Static Discharge. Okay. <laughs> Never been happier to take a burn spell to the face. Yeah, do your surveilling, pump your stuff. Sure, sure, sure. Shouldn't have tapped out the opponent. I don't know if our opponent realizes they're literally about to die. Uh, we will. Eldritch Evolution. It's lethal, right? Yeah, it's definitely, yes, it's definitely, definitely, definitely lethal. That's enough prodigious gross to kill a elephant. Seder Wayfinder. I guess Seder Wayfinder kind of did do its job. It milled some cards. It found us a Storm Herald with Eldritch Evolution. Storm Herald, uh, gonna... Reanimate a few enchantments. And how much damage to it? 20, 24. Only, a, that's like a mini Storm Herald. Shouldn't have tapped out about it. You shouldn't have tapped out. Getting people if they decide to tap out and try to play magic. The funny thing is, if our opponents just leave up removal, very likely they beat us. If you just leave up a removal spell, instant speed removal all game. Wow, opponent's going to four. If you just leave up an instant speed removal spell all game, you're probably gonna make us die. Atlanta War Elves, oh no, is this mono green? Is this the the Tron of Arena? The Maldifor mono green win? Wow, it was pretty bad milling. Two Eldritch Evolutions in a land. Literally nothing that is helpful here. Forest for opponent. Cultivate. Okay. Oh, maybe this is just like mono green ramp? Mono Green Super Friends. Do we Pyro or do we Wayfinder or Circle of Lands Druid? What is Pyro? So we discard, we definitely discard Prodigious Growth and then land, I guess. Well, get in for one. Pwn it down to 19. Well, we got an aura in the graveyard. We still need more though for it to be lethal. Field of Ruin, Mind Stone. All right, opponent's hand is on the table. They do have some whammy draws. All right, this time we really actually need this Seder Wayfinder. Actually, we could grapple to avoid the risk of Seder Wayfinder betraying us. Let's. It can't fail every time. It can't fail every time. There's math involved in this. <sighs> okay, Seder Wayfinder finally, <laughs> finally gives us a land. Let's play our Snarl. Are we getting back the Storm Herald? I mean, I guess we can get it back next turn and cast it if we need to. Yeah, let's just uh, do some more milling. We need more enchantments in our graveyard. Three lands in Audacity. Those were not those were not exactly hits, but we will get in with everything. Opponent can do some blocking if they want. Yeah, we, we've milled a lot of cards, but we do not have many auras in the graveyard. Land of War Visionary. Opponent draws a card. All right. Well, we probably need another setup turn here. Circle of the la I mean, sooner or later, if we just keep milling four, eventually we're going to mill enchantments. We have to. Okay, though that was a good pile. That was three three big enchantments. So I think we have lethal next turn. Seder Wayfinder. Oh, now we definitely have. Definitely, definitely, definitely have lethal next turn. Um, does it matter what land we play? 
Let's play a snarl. When you get a chance to play a snarl untapped, how do you turn it down? Go attacking. All right, opponent. So I guess kill us. We're kind of hilariously rooting for an Ugin here. I assume Ugin's one of our opponent's big payoffs. We're kind of hoping they just Ugin and sweep our board and then we just absolutely crush them with the Storm Herald. So opponent gonna cash in the mind zone for a card. Opponent, land. Karn, okay, sure. What does Karn find? Not Graveyard Hate. Oh, if they get a Tormod script, I'm gonna cry. Do they have the foresight to know? Oh, uh, Golos, okay. Well, opponent, <laughs> you may have tapped out for a good card. The bad news is uh, you still tapped out, which means you are about to die. Aw, I big proportions. Too bad that wasn't in the graveyard. This is still gonna be a, a pretty bomby Storm Herald, though. Opponent, no mana, no cards. We will play a three drop. Hmm, how big will this hasty three drop be? 5247 opponent. Nice Kolos. Nice Karn. <laughs> the the ultimate BM would be to just attack the Karn and hope that they they whiff on their Golos spin to do it to do it again next turn. The thing about Storm Herald is it is a one shot because all the auras exile. So keep that in mind. There is not really a way to rebuild it, but we're actually okay. So we are uh, just hoping our opponents tap out here. Season Pyro. It's actually a very good draw here. Getting rid of this prodigious growth seems helpful. What do you got? Ooh, Goblin, eh? And a Snoop with a, ooh, Putrid Goblin on top. All right, so opponent's playing like Jund combo, Persist combo goblins. Well, let's, oh, I guess it doesn't matter which one we run out. Let's run out the Circle of Lands, Druid. Mill some cards. Double Ancestral Mask. Okay, that's a that's a start. This turn, we actually kind of want to just draw a big aura so we can see some Pyromancer in the graveyard. Munitions Expert on top, eh? So our opponent to go infinite, they need Sack Outlet, Persist Goblin, and, well, there's a Sack Outlet. And then like a Grum Gully or some way to keep replenishing the counter on the Persist Goblin. Well, I mean, Audacity is technically an aura we can discard. Not exactly a prodigious growth, but we still need Storm Herald. That is uh, that is still on our to-do list. Well, Season Pyro, discard the two auras. If we draw into Storm Herald, we might be able to win next turn. This Goblin Bombardment's actually a kind of a big issue. We saw this in our last Budget Magic, where we played the Goblin Bombardment, Goblin Bombardment deck. It is very good at sniping small creatures. It is painful because you have to, uh, ooh, Eldritch Evolution, that is potentially a Storm Herald. It is painful because you have to uh, sack your board, but it is possible that our, ooh, Muxus on top. It is possible that our opponent can use this bombardment to fizzle our combo. Worth mentioning Storm Herald, <laughs> we almost always just put all the auras on Storm Herald, but it can actually put them on any creatures, which may be relevant here. Opponent's gonna snipe the season pyro. Oh, wow, if they like kill this circle of lands druid right now, we wouldn't be able to, Eldritch Evolution, Putrid Goblin. So our opponent, our opponent can fizzle our combo here. I don't know if our opponent knows how this works though. So I think we're gonna go for it. We can sack the Circle of Lands Druid, get our Storm Herald. If with the Storm Herald's ETB on the stack, our opponent sacks our board to kill all of our creatures, it fizzles and we almost certainly lose to this Muxus. The problem is it's not getting any better because this Goblin Bombardment's gonna be sitting out there. So it's not gonna get better in the future. So I think we just have to do it and trust that we're playing a weird enough deck. Our opponent will not do it correctly. <laughs> All right, we got, we're gonna go for it. So our opponent, because it persists, they can deal four damage total. Four, uh, one damage four times, which is exactly enough to kill Storm Herald and our two tokens, and then they win. So we get back a land, not really relevant. We get a Storm, I mean, this is our window. We know the Muxus is coming, and the combo is a, pot uh, a potential problem. All right, well, Storm Herald. So our opponent needs to do it right now. If they let the trigger resolve, it's too late and they die. So they just need to snipe our board right now. Because after this resolves, oh God, they didn't do it. Hmm, this time our opponent, I don't even know. <laughs> Technically, they weren't even tapped out. They had a way to fizzle the combo. They just didn't do it. So now there's no window. Their next window, we're gonna have all these auras on our Storm Herald. It is going to be lethally big and four damage is not gonna matter. Yeah, that's a 28 power Storm Herald. Yeah, I think our opponent might be realizing. <laughs> they might be realizing that mistakes were made. Okay, I mean, in our opponent's defense, 
that is kind of a counterintuitive situation. I think I thought of it because we had that game against elves when we were playing bombardment where they tried to kill us with shaman of the pack and we were able to sack our whole board to get rid of all the elves to survive and then win. Yeah, opponent did not see the line. Well, uh, I don't even know the lesson of this one. Should a goblin bombard minted? I guess. Always, always bombard? Yeah. Telling our opponents on Arena that if they tap out, they die. We had some uh, 15 rare budget <laughs> Storm Herald combo. Well, tap land go. About it. Oh god, control. Oh, so control is one of the matchups that scares me because control decks often don't want to tap out. They want to always leave a man on their opponent's turn. So it might be hard to find the the time, the window to Storm Herald here. We would love a season Pyromancer. That would be by far our sweetest draw. Opponent take two. Are we just post combat audacity? That feels really bad, but sure. How do you feel about? Yeah, that that looked very awkward. <laughs> Get in for two post combat audacity. I was hoping our opponent would respond. Okay, reprieve. Sure. Well, that's a audacity up that circle of dreams. You would. We saw last time our way to actually pull it off against control is pressure enough that we have to force them to wrath. That's our that's our dream. Get in, hit ya. We're gonna Eldritch Evolution. Hopefully this doesn't get countered. If it does, we still get to draw a card and get back a land, so it's not the absolute end of the world, but we would prefer to actually tutor up a Seasoned Pyromancer and discard these two cards here. A bonnet. <clears throat> yeah, Reprieve's really good against Eldritch Evolution. All right, all right, all right. Well, that's two Reprieves out of our opponent's end. That's the good news. We're slogging through, oh, come on, no Stifle. All right, opponent has infinite mana. That's not great. Do we do nothing this turn? I think we literally do nothing. All we have is an Audacity. We really need to find a Seasoned Pyromancer. We might have to like try to Storm Herald Eldritch Evolution Storm Herald to find a Seasoned Pyromancer. Lane Lane is Sanctity, okay, that doesn't matter. Grapple with the past is better than nothing. At least this lets us do something. Mill, mill, mill. Get back a Circle of Landroid, I guess. Would have rather hit a season pyro there. Well, play the circle of lands, druid. Mill, 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 mill. Oh god, we are milling pitifully. <laughs> I think we still only have two audacities. <laughs> Out of milling like 15 cards, we have like two audacities in the graveyard. There's a pyro. Okay, that is the draw we wanted. Please don't counter this. Okay. Okay, we're getting close. So now the question is gonna be, is there a world where our opponent taps out? How do we get our opponent? How do we get our opponent to tap out with their control deck? So remember Storm Herald, it can put the auras on anything. So our actual game plan might be, uh, since our opponent is seeming like they have so much mana that they can play big powerful things like Teferi and not tap out. It is unlikely we ever get this opponent to fully tap out. Seder Wayfinder, mill some big auras, please. Well, you're hitting the lands this time. I guess that's some consolation. All right, Seder Wayfinder, mill some big auras. We don't care about the land this time. Your job is to mill auras. Seder Wayfinder, every time. When we need a land, it doesn't find it. When we don't need a land, and we want to mill auras, it mills, it mills nothing and draws lands. Okay, there's the Wrath. Yeah, that's the problem, they have so much mana. Our opponent can Wrath and still not be tapped out. <sighs> Do we not even have lethal yet? I'm not even sure if we have lethal. We've just not milled any of the big auras. We've milled none of the big auras. Well, exile season pyros and hope not to get stifled. Opponent, castle Arden Vale, sure. Now opponents tap down, let's season pyro now. Getting it stifled would be awkward. And we know our, we've actually seen stifle, so we know our opponent's playing stifle. It's not like we're just randomly playing around stifle. Are we Eldritch Evolutioning tokens into like Seder Wayfinders? Is that what we've been reduced to? Is that actually, that might actually be the line. Oh God, what horrible milling. This is like the literal worst use of Eldritch Evolution, but I don't know what else we do at this point. Sack it. It's not like we didn't even get anything that good. Yeah, we're gonna get a Seder Wayfinder. I mean, look at all those big, or we're gonna mill them eventually. They're in our deck. Like sooner or later by just the law of averages, we're gonna mill them all. All right. Oh, could you imagine farewell? Farewell would, oh, that would be so brutal. Well, mill some cards. Wow. Okay, there's three. Now we actually have, now we actually have lethal. The problem is our opponent has infinite mana and they are not tapping out. I mean, I think we're gonna have to end up going for it at some point. I have, I don't think our opponent will ever tap out. So I think what we gotta do is just make a big board so we can play around targeted removal and then, and then just go for it. Spread the auras around. 
Well, season pyro. Make some dorks. Seder Wayfinder, play it. Plus, we've milled almost our entire deck. So we're going to have to go for it because... Well, okay, two more big auras. That's good. We're going to have to go for it because we're going to mill out if we don't. Storm Herald? We have five attackers. So our goal here is to make as many of our creatures lethal and trampling as possible. Yeah, we'll see. I don't have any fan. Opponent nice does, but I... <laughs> I'm still, I'm expecting discontinuity or something. Like our opponent just lets us do all this and then just ends the turn or something brutal. I guess they could stifle the Storm Herald trigger. That would be hilarious. All right, well, I mean, it looks like Storm Herald's gonna resolve. All right, how many opponents have 14? We want everything to have trample and everything to be lethal. So if our opponent has discontinuity or something, we're just, we're, we're done. There's nothing we can do about that. We can try to play around targeted removal, play around fateful absences and marches and all that stuff. So I think that's the goal is just like spread it around so everything's big and trampling and hope that our opponent can't kill enough stuff and one of them slips through. I mean, I think we're gonna have like five lethal attackers if we actually are doing this correctly, which I guess we'll find out momentarily. Just spread out the big trampoly stuff with all these enchantments. Ancestral Mask is actually kind of absurd too. It actually adds more power than anything else. Um, uh, on the Storm Herald. All right. Well, one, two, and then we put the Ancestral Mask out there. I mean, that's a lot of lethal attackers. Can you kill them all, opponent? Can don't discount it. Opponent says good game. Okay, good game. Are you dead? <laughs> Wait, did we just get GG settled? We just got GG settled. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't tap out and you see what happens. Our opponents are learning. They're learning. Handing out a very harsh lesson on Arena today, which is uh, if you tap out, you die to our huge Storm Herald on a 15 rare budget. Now let's get this snarl out of our hand. This hand's a little speculative. Ooh, another red source is actually probably our best draw. We want to get down these season pyros. Opponent, Ledger Shredder. Okay. When I see a is it deck that plays Ledger Shredder instead of Wizards, I breathe a sigh of relief. I'm like, okay, we can we can do this. We can actually do this. There's a, <laughs> there, we have a chance. It's not Wizards. Ooh, there's a Storm Herald. I mean, can we win in two turns? Maybe. We actually would love to draw, all right, second Ledger Shredder, sure. And a sleight of hand, grow the Ledger Shredders. I mean, we got Epic Proportions, Mass, double up. Actually, we don't win this turn, do we? Is this just, Straight up the kill? Is that lethal? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, opponent attacks. Oh, all right, we're gonna just gonna wait. Next turn, Storm Herald is gonna be ridiculously game ending. All right, well, we have reached the stage of the game where we wanna be, which is if you tap out, you die. Opponent, will you leave up mana? Will you leave up mana? Will you leave up removal? Or will you pay the ultimate price? Opponent's gonna chart a course, draw some cards. Apparently they wanna get cards in the graveyard because they didn't attack first to uh, do the raid thing. I guess actually our opponent might be dead even if they, wow, shocks themselves. Dragon Rage Channeler, okay. Does some conniving. We can also, oh, it's Phoenix, I see. That's why, yeah, 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 that makes more sense. Lightning Axe discarded, that's a potential removal spell. Opponent, wow, gonna go attacking. The greed. Well, I think what we can do here is Storm Herald, but spread the auras around to try to be, like we might be able to beat one removal spell here. Plus our opponent just discarded a removal spell. I think our opponent does have removal. The problem they have is Storm Herald can put the auras on other things. So if they kill Storm Herald in response, we just load up something else. If they leave mana up, we're just gonna, instead of going all in on one creature, we're just gonna try to make like at least two lethal creatures. We might be, can we make three lethal creatures? Grow you, I guess we're, we can probably only make two that are lethal. So let's make a season pyro and a storm hair lethal. If our opponent has a whatever, fading hope or something. All right, so we get a 16-16, a 20-20, and we can attack an opponent scoops it up and uh well that's power storm herald sweet sweet so what do we learn this week about our storm herald if you tap out you lose deck and overall i played 23 matches with the deck i won 12 of them giving us a 52 percent match win percentage which is pretty good for a budget deck i will say the deck's plan is actually really effective it's like super consistent just stock the graveyard wait for the right moment storm herald kill ya the thing is i would not play this deck in best of three it works really well in best of one because in best of one you're probably not going to fight through graveyard 
graveyard hate. In best of three, pretty much any self-respecting opponent is going to have some graveyard hate in the sideboard. And if our opponent's bringing in a bunch of ley lines and rest in pieces and soul guide lanterns, then our plan goes from really, really good and consistent to really, really bad and probably unplayable. So wouldn't want to play this one in best of three, but in best of one, the deck's cheap to put together. It does some really funny things. It makes massive creatures by surprise and really punishes opponents if they get a little greedy and choose to tap out. So anyway, that's our budget magic for this week. Storm Herald, if you tap out, you lose combo. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Looking for even more magic? Well, make sure to check out last week's Against the Odds, where we taught Arena Zoomers why you always have to pay the one, or maybe the video about the fastest kill in the history of the modern format.